Recently, I've been a bit obsessed with, uh, with argon the last, last couple of weeks. I wanted to find a gas that I could freeze, um, and I found I settled upon argon because it's very easy to get hold of. You can use liquid nitrogen to, to liquefy and then freeze the argon. This is my apparatus. Um, first, first things first, purge all the air from here so with argon. It's a little bit denser than air, so it will just sit in here. I think the molar mass is about 40 compared with air is about 29-ish. So, um, so yeah, so another third is dense or something like that. This flask is basically pretty full of argon. Just inflate the balloon a little. Interesting facts about argon that I've uncovered over the last, uh, the last couple of weeks of my obsession. If you look at the, the periodic table, if you look at the, the molar masses of um, of the elements, you find there's a, a, argon is a, a bit of an anomaly in that it has a higher molar mass than potassium, which is the next element along. Um, and generally, that's, that doesn't really fit with the trend of increasing molar mass with atomic number. The reason for this anomaly is that the molar mass of argon depends on the isotopic ratio the, and the, the prevalence of the relative of the all different isotopes of argon on Earth. Um, and interestingly, the, the, the the ratio of those isotopes on Earth is very different to the ratio in the universe at large. Argon-36, which is the most common isotope in the universe, on Earth, the, all the argon-36 has escaped from the atmosphere into space, whereas the argon-40 is being continuously, continuously replaced by uh, the radioactive decay of potassium-40 in the Earth's crust. So actually, this is all, all the argon that we have on, the, on, on Earth, and it's the third most abundant gas in the atmosphere, so it's an incredibly common element. All of it has come from the radioactive decay, basically, in the Earth's crust, which I think is very interesting. You've got a good, good 150 mils or so of argon in there, I reckon, which is a decent, decent amount to be playing with. So the next stage, I'm going to freeze the argon in here. This is probably the point where I might start to need a glove. Oh, yeah, def definitely freezing in there. Um, it's looking, looking better than the last batch I made as well, so fingers crossed, we'll let it freeze up a bit more and then I think we should have a nice little slug of solid argon. I've frozen three lumps of argon in here, so we'll take, we'll take one out and see what we can see and then if I just pour this, it'll probably take a moment just to melt itself out of the tube and then just, oh, there we go. That's very nice. So we'll see that sort of melting before our eyes, I think. Argon uh, freezes at about minus 190 degrees centigrade and boils at about minus 187 or something like that. So it has a very narrow liquid phase. So within three degrees, it goes from being a solid to being a gas. So this is the second I'm just pouring out. It's a bigger lump this time, I think. Oh, there we go. Because it has this very narrow liquid phase, it just melts boils away straight away so it sort of disappears. The vapour that you can see, this is just the moisture in the atmosphere that's condensing into the air that's being killed by the ice as it flows around it, but the liquid that you can see dripping off, that's the liquid argon that's melting from the ice and immediately boiling as it lands on the surface of the cloth.
So there you go, argon ice, a noble gas in solid form. I think that's pretty satisfying.